Hello, um, good morning. Perhaps we could start off with a quick round of introductions. Clement, do you want to start? Yeah, of course. Um, my name is uh, Clement Chivuta from uh, Ministry of Community Development and Social Services. I am Acting Senior Social Welfare Officer in the Department of Social Welfare. So pretty much working in the area of child care reforms. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. Mwanza, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Emily. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Mwansa Chigutiamma Lupande. I am a child protection officer in uh, the UNICEF country office. I am the one uh, overseeing uh, the support uh, to government on the uh, strengthening of the alternative care system in Zambia. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. My name is Emily Dilap and I'm from the consultancy firm Child Frontiers. So um, I'm just going to ask you a few questions on child care reform in Zambia. The first question was around um, the numbers of children in different forms of care in Zambia. If you could give us an idea of, of that, please. Maybe Clement, you could start with that question. Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you, Emily. And uh, just to start with, just to situate our, our discussion a bit. Uh, so our context is that uh, we have an estimated population of uh, 8 million people in, in Zambia and 52% uh, of uh, the, the, the country's population are children. And 16% uh, of uh, children are not living with their biological parents. And about 32% of uh, households are caring for children who are not their, their biological children um, of the household's heads per se. And uh, uh, currently we have about 6,517 children who are living in residential care in about 184 uh, residential care facilities, which in Zambia we call a uh, child care facilities. So at least 68% uh, of children in residential care um, have one or, or, or both parents who are, who are alive. So just to indicate that among the children that are in uh, child care facilities, we have um, a, about 68% uh, of these children who have both or at least one parent uh, alive. So uh, just to give you an average also in terms of uh, our children that are placed in foster care. So on average, about 110 children are placed in foster care uh, that is annually, okay? And then uh, also on average of about 64 children are adopted uh, annually. That is to count for both domestic and uh, uh, inter-country uh, inter adoption. And um, I think in terms of the statistics, uh, all that I've, I've given, uh, we also want to mention that we have a, a, an approximate of uh, 375 um, child care social workers, the workforce that is in the Department of Social Welfare, who are gazetted juvenile inspectors who handle child care and protection cases. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. That's really helpful context. Thank you. And the next question was around what you feel are your main achievements in terms of childcare reform in the country. I don't know whether you want to start with that one again, Clement. Yes, I, I think I would uh, start with that. And then I think maybe once I can pick it up as well. So uh, I think we just highlight some of the key uh, achievements uh, that range from aspects of policy uh, framework strengthening. So for us, we see that as an achievement where we've had the, you know, the development of the minimum standards of care for child care facilities. We've also um, have in place the alternative care and reintegration guidelines. We've also developed uh, case management uh, protocols and national standards uh, for accreditation and authorization of adoption agencies. Uh, for us, I think that is a step in the right direction because it helps us in terms of, you know, contextualizing uh, uh, care reforms and no, um, improving them and ensuring that uh, uh, we adhere to, to set standards. 
Also, in terms of uh, um, our legislative framework, we, we could report also that we are happy to mention that the initiatives towards um, drafting of the Children's Code Bill uh, is an initiative that we are happy about because this is one uh, bill that will actually expressly provide for family-based care options as the, 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 the first core of action um, and external care being a measure of last resort. So we hope that once that is reflected in our pieces of uh, legislation in this current bill that is uh, about to be enacted, I think that will be a plus to our uh, care reform journey. Also, we can report about uh, evidence generation I think for us also that is a key achievement because uh, we've had a nationwide assessment of child care facilities. Uh, that those are institution, institutions that take care of children. I think from that uh, 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 assessment, we're able to identify the, the gaps that were there. For instance, poor record keeping, weak staff capacity, unnecessary placement of children in, in formal care. And, and, and for us, that such kind of evidence generation does provide a government in terms of, um, and also with our cooperating partners, in terms of the next steps uh, going forward. So we also want to, report about you know, development of the MIS um, for, for managing of cases of children in external care. So the digitalization of uh, um, these, um, you know, uh, maybe data capturing tools, you know, uh, I think makes it easier and it supports actually uh, the, the, the work that we are doing in terms of care where, where in you could have real time data on children in, 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 in care at all levels, you know. So the information captured also helps the workforce to understand the factors leading to the admission of, of children. We can also report of a key milestone, which is the promotion of family-based care. We had developed a communication and advocacy strategy, uh, which uh, in a sense is, is helping us to champion the, the, the campaign on family-based care. So we've also, you know, developed tools around the, around around those areas. Transitioning also of children from, you know, uh, institutional care to family-based care, our reintegration program. This is, is is quite quite key. We can report of about um, uh, six hundred and fifty something, fifty-seven months, I think so, uh, of children that have been reintegrated in 20, uh, 2020. Um, yeah, so I, I think uh, uh, basically we can also lastly maybe speak about uh, the capacity development. You know, we've had uh, um, uh, in-service training and our relationship with the key uh, learning institutions, such as the University of Zambia and Mulungush University, where we train uh, officers. Uh, for instance, in the past, I think, three years or so, we've managed to train about 153 uh, social welfare officers uh, in case management and particularly, you know, managing of cases of children in institutional uh, care, but also the uh, aspect of reintegration, transitioning them to a uh, family-based care. So I think for now, I would, uh, yeah, um, I think basically those would be the key, key achievements that uh, we've had as a country. Fantastic. Thank you. Moanza, did you have anything you wanted to add to those achievements? Oh, Mwanzi, I think you're on mute, sorry. Very sorry about that. Can you hear me now? We can, yeah. Okay, so maybe just to add um, one more, uh, the successful implementation of a pilot on um, uh, under the COVID response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that would be a good uh, success to share in the sense that we've been advocating over the years for families at risk of separation to be linked to, to uh, the main social cash transfer program. But because the criteria is already set, it has been very difficult. But with the COVID uh, emergency response, there was an emergency cash transfer and the government was able to broaden the criteria and qualification criteria for, the, for families that would benefit. And families at risk of separation or those that are already separated were linked. And we are already beginning to see, of course, there are places where 
the, the, the report is not so good, but in some families, uh, you see that uh, the situation in the household has improved as a result of, of that once off support. Families that are focused are able to, to, to save some money and start a, a, a business that is able to help them uh, put food and be able to uh, support children with uh, the, the, the school requirements like books, shoes, and, 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 and the like. So that has situationed us in um, better to advocate based on evidence to show that if families are better supported, they are able to keep their family, their children within the family environment and, uh, um, and, and, and thereby we are able to avoid uh, family uh, separation. Thank you. That's, that's, that's great. Thank you both. Um, just quickly, maybe you could both just mention one or two challenges that you faced along the way. Clement, do you want to start with that one? Yeah, I, I could start with one or two and then once I can pick it up. Um, of course, the issues of uh, funding uh, do still remain um, a challenge. Uh, so inadequate funding for child and family welfare services um, especially processes that uh, relate to family tracing and, uh, you know, even management and administration of institutional care still remains uh, quite a challenge. I want to be quick to mention, of course, that uh, we've had political will in the recent past that uh, government has also been, um, you know, uh, releasing some grants towards uh, the administration of uh, child care facilities, but that still is not uh, is not enough to cover all the you know the, the requirements you know uh, uh, therein. Uh, I would also want to pick on um, maybe a little effort in terms of advocacy on issues surrounding family-based care. Uh, as such, child care facilities, um, you know, sometimes do continue to mushroom even you know until maybe when the department sees that something is mushrooming there you know uh, i think uh, um, more perhaps uh, needs to be done in terms of um, you know advocates that the, the, the agenda of government is to actually uh, support family based care as opposed to you know um, uh, institutional care because of the negative effects that uh, surround surround such. So I think little effort in terms of um, the advocacy still remains uh, uh, quite uh, challenging. Something that is done there. Yeah. So um, I think also maybe the COVID. I would want to speak about the COVID nineteen also. Um, I think whilst there is a demand of services out there. Um, it's restricted in terms of the provision of this service because you as a caregiver or as an officer, you know, uh, are restricted in terms of provision of this service. High demand, but then in terms of provision, you're restricted because of the, uh, of course, the, the COVID protocols, the, the distance, social distancing and, and whatnot. So I think those uh, form a, a, some, some of the challenges. Maybe once I would like to pick a few from there. Thank you, Clement. Um, yeah, I think to add on the issue of mindset, we have a lot of work to do in ensuring that uh, both the community members and the child care facilities have a mind shift in the, sense, in the sense that right now there's still families that believe that children will get a better life if placed in a facility. The same is the case with uh, managers of child care facility. So apart from advocacy, I think it's awareness raising, dialogue meetings at community level to just remind us as a people of how that it is very important for children to grow up in families. So the challenge remains that people believe that the facility is the best place. The other, play, the other challenge is uh, I think the issue of workload for the government uh, social workforce. Uh, there's very few officers that have a great, a great mandate. And uh, so if you, for instance, have a district social welfare officer, um, that person has cases that they have to manage for children in alternative care and also social cash transfer. They have to do juvenile justice. They have to do all other social welfare services that they have to provide. And uh, most offices uh, in the country have uh, a minimum of two officers uh, working. 
uh, a few places like Lusaka may have a few more officers, but you'd find that, for instance, with the caseload of over 2,000 uh, children in childcare facilities against uh, a workforce of 12 in an office. So you can imagine how many uh, cases each one of the officers is managing. So I think that remains a challenge and uh, government uh, has had a freeze on the employment uh, of officers in government institutions and the Department of Social Welfare or the Ministry of uh, Community Development and Social Welfare is one such ministry that is affected by this freeze. Thank, thank you. And if you could just, just to wrap up quite quickly, if um, you could both just give us a key lesson learned or word of advice that you would like to give to other countries in the region going through similar care, for, care reform processes. Clement, do you want to start off? Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, one of the key lessons that uh, Zambia has, uh, has learned is uh, that um, coordination and the multi-sectoral approach uh, towards you know, care reforms is, is, is quite key. And uh, I think it, um, uh, the achievements that we have scored as, as, as government have been as a result of, you know, these uh, combined efforts between civil society, you know, in partners such as UNICEF uh, in ensuring that, uh, you know, we, we are able to follow, you know, these protocols that we put in place, implement policy, case management, you know. So I think that that's one, one, one key thing that uh, we may be able to learn from, uh, from, from this, this process that um, uh, coordination is key, uh, not only government ministers, but also with the um, other stakeholders in uh, uh, providing care and especially advancing the reintegration of, of, of children. Uh, so um, what uh, the other one is, of course, evidence generation. I think we, we did allude to, to that uh, aspect, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's key because it helps in identifying what gaps are and the areas of focus going forward. So for us, for instance, the assessment that was done, a nationwide assessment, does offer a platform on which areas need to be reinforced. For instance, if it, is it in, in, in areas of policy? Is it in areas of you know the, the law and, and stuff like that? So, I think those are key lessons that you know um, the other other countries as well as ourselves would want to bank on. Thank you. Wanza, did you have anything else to add there? Maybe just the continued engagement uh, with uh, key stakeholders in the sector, particularly uh, the families as well as uh, the facilities. Uh, because with the engagement we have seen, especially of the facilities, we have seen uh, a mindset shift in some of the facilities where they are now more open to supporting children from the family environment. Uh, so I think just continue continued uh, engagement, helping everyone understand what government's vision is and bringing them on board as partners to, 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 to fulfill that vision has been a, 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 a great and remains a great lesson for us to continue building on. Thank you both. That's been extremely helpful. Thank you both for your time today.